Vice Chancellor Kumar of EFLU, Director Miyamoto of the Japan Foundation, New Delhi, Professor Shyam, Director of Conference, and Professor Vedekar, Coordinator. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and ohayou gozaimasu. But it's almost noon. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm very pleased to be here today. Uh, this, uh, for the uh, inauguration of the second international conference on Japanese language education in South Asia, organized by the Department of Asian Languages, EFLU, in collaboration with the Japan Foundation. As I myself attended the last uh, uh, conference earlier this year, it is good to be back at EFLU for the second conference on Japanese language education. I am also delighted to meet all the participants of this conference from various South Asian countries. I wish to express my appreciation to the Department of, of, of Asian Languages, EFLU, for hosting this conference again. As I said, when I was, there, uh, when I was here last time, the EFLU venue suits this conference well since it is a hub of Japanese language education in South India, with more than 100 students currently studying Japanese language, BA honors and part-time courses included. Since the introduction of the Japanese language course as part-time course in the year 1993, EFLU has been striving to promote and teach the Japanese language. And I now understand that EFLU is establishing a PhD course in Japanese language, and that's a very welcome development. The Japan Foundation just recently released a provisional report of the survey on Japanese language education abroad. And the full report is expected to be released soon, although this provisional report does not provide the country-specific data on India. We expect that the final report will reflect the recent increasing interest in learning Japanese in India. As of 2015, when the last survey was conducted, the number of Indians Indian studying Japanese was 24,011. In South India, there are 7,000 Japanese language learners, and the number of applicants for the Japanese language pro proficiency test is on the increase. Beginning from December 2019, the Japan Foundation has added the city of Salem in Tamil Nadu as the second center in the state to write the JLPT exam, mainly to benefit the students in the southern district of the Tamil Nadu state. A total of 800 students are expected to appear for the uh, December JLPT exam at the Salem Center. Certainly, the growing interest in learning Japanese language relates to the increasing number of Japanese companies operating in South India. An increasing number of Japanese companies means increasing job opportunities for, for Indian workers who can speak Japanese and act as bridges between the Indian subsidiaries and the headquarters in Japan. Thus follows a growing need for qualified Japanese language teachers who can teach Japanese language at higher education institutions. Currently, the number of Japanese language teachers remains too small vis-a-vis -vis the number of potential learners. Also noted is a growing interest among engineering colleges, in particular, to teach Japanese language, and this trend continues. Against this background, in 2017, the Prime Ministers of Japan and India agreed to establish Japanese language certificate courses at 100 higher education institutions in India, as well as to train 1,000 Japanese language teachers over the next five years. 
In July 2018, the Japanese Language Teachers Training Center was established at JNU in New Delhi. So far, as I understand three batches of participants have so far been trained at this center. As you know, uh, um, all Nippon Airways, ANA, commenced direct flight services between Chennai and Tokyo on October the 27th this year. And Japan Airlines plans to start direct flight services between Bangalore and Tokyo from March 2020. With the introduction of these direct flights, we see gross potential in business and tourism between Japan and South Asia. Uh, sorry, South India. It will certainly encourage more students to learn Japanese. This conference has participants from countries such as Japan, South Asian countries, and others physically present or through online. During the next two days, you will share your experiences as Japanese language teachers and exchange views on the situations surrounding Japanese language education in each participating country. I hope you will find this conference of use and mutually beneficial by learning from each other's experiences with a view to providing better quality Japanese language education back in your home country. So I thank the Japan Foundation and EFLU for organizing this international conference and I wish each and every one of you a very successful conference. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.